What are you printing in here, Shane? A bucket. A bucket? Pretty much. Just to stiffen up the bucket that keeps collapsing on the... Um, oh, yeah, on the vacuum cleaner. Ah, yes, because at the moment we're using a yogurt bucket. That is to replace this bit. Here. So his bucket keeps collapsing when he turns the vacuum cleaner on. Shane has just finished sanding the door and prepping it. So now he's cleaning it. Kids are doing school. It's raining outside. Here we go. Cleaning with acetone. Last week, Shane fitted the door frame, the carbon fiber door frame here in our um, up cabin. And while we've had troubles trying to source the right hinges, so we've ordered a heap of stuff from AliExpress, but they've just cancelled the our order. So we've got to go back and re-find some hinges that we want. And you know, it's got to be durable stuff. This is quite a unforgiving environment and there is moisture and corrosion in the salt air. And so you need to be very careful about the screws that you use and the bolts that you use and door hinges and anything metal really. So uh, we're working on that part. Hopefully we can find some shortly. Let's go and see what Shane's up to. Oh, you're painting it. So I think Looking from when we were talking about last week about brush strokes in the paint and how well it goes on, that Shane is just flow coating this door. I'm sure he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but that looks very much like flow coat is just going on the back. And this is in order to prep it for our soundproofing and insulation. Yeah. Is it flow coat? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Confirmation. And I can also tell because it sticks. Challenges of working in a small space, Shane. Catastrophic flash floods in Spain have killed dozens and devastated towns. Meteorologists branded it one of the most intense storms of its type in the last century for the Valencia region. It was caused by a destructive weather system known in Spain as DANA. Pumpkins. Oh my gosh, There's look at the middle. Line. It's an island in the middle of this one. Yeah. Holy smokes, it's extremely long, sharp cuts you know, from <laughs> Wow, I think you can bring the dinghy over here at the moment.
streets in Valencia, usually a very beautiful place, now in some parts look like the scene from a disaster movie. over there. Holy smokes. They are loud. That's epic. So I'm riding to work today and I'm just just um, around the corner from us is where they're sort of pulling all the cars out that have been devastated by the floods. Amazon Prime trucks that were delivering packages. Like all past all the trees behind us. I don't know how good it is to see their trucks. All of them recovered from the roads. The emergency services is trying to open up the roads. Last in day. The painters are still working on it, you can see pieces of it masked off there. are up to. I think they are waiting for the guys that are working with the mask jack down below. Let's go see what Shane's up to in the office. So, what have I been doing for um, the Balthazar project this last time around? Well, <clears throat> um, mostly dealing with getting boat ready for shipping. So that's shipping drawings um, so that we can set out how the boat looks when it goes on the ship. That meant that I had to recreate uh, cradle drawings, update the cradle drawings to the as-built. Obviously we had to do some modifications as well. Uh, set out where we'd like the shipping company to actually attach all the rest of it. This has all become the important stuff since the My Song fell off the ship disaster happened. So I've been spending a lot of time dealing with cradles and my CAD model and all the rest, updating everything, making sure everything's in there. Uh, yeah, of course the shipping plan shows lots of rat staff. Uh, yeah, so they've got something to work with. Uh, the other big project uh, has been updating the rig plan, um, making it as per 
draw as per measured because there's uh, the as built is not always the same as uh, as drawn so they now do actually match um, real important thing about that is making sure that uh, we've got accurate information for when we order new cables for things um, in the right length making sure that uh, silly things like I actually set the models up to be dynamic for us adjust a dimension down here on the force day and I can actually rake our force day backwards and forwards in the CAD model see the rate change and also the distances between the furler units all happen live I've been working on drawing uh, rigs and uh, Balthasar cradles so that's been me for a bit okay let's go down to the sail loft Pipe cots all ready to go. And I'm putting, making dividers for these today, so making those up. My little sour right. And what I'm gonna do today is work on this kind. I thought I'd show you guys how I did some of this. Like the footage isn't the best, but it does give you an idea. And when I was first asked to do these, cover these wheels, I just couldn't find anywhere any sort of information on how you would do it. Like there's a, well, there's some of it on how you would do a boom on a windsurfer. So I just took that information and um, there was a couple of other guys that gave me a few tips on how to do it. Why would you cover a beautifully good looking um, carbon fiber steering wheel? Well, a lot of the racing teams will cover their wheels because yeah, it's just nicer to hang on to you know, a soft, foamy thing rather than a, a carbon wheel for long periods of time. I suppose the first thing to talk about is uh, the foam that I use. It's an EVA foam and they are UV resistant. First step in the process is to make sure that you've got a nice clean wheel gave it a quick wipe down with some acetone and then the next step is to mark out the center line on the inside of the wheel and then I went around and marked the center line on the outside of the wheel now these are going to be my guidelines for application of the foam and then use some masking tape and this is another guide for me this sort of it's displaying about where I want the foam to come to on the spokes, stopping the glue from going any further. Then let's work on the foam. So I have, these were pre-made strips for me. And what I'm doing here is just sanding a 45 degree beveled edge onto one side. And this is going to just provide a ramp for the foam when it's wrapped around the wheel. And then this is my matching center line on the inside side of the foam. And I've measured how wide this has got to be. So for me, it's about 50 mil. This blue line will line up with my outside markings on the wheel. And then I need to trim the ends. And again, I put a 45 edge on the foam for that. And then here I'm just marking out where I'm going to put my glue on the outside beveled edge. And then I get my contact cement and now I can apply it to the wheel. So it's just about a smooth application. And then once it's done I can flip it over. And I usually use a credit card or you know soft plastic just to wipe on that glue as quick as I can cover the whole thing and leave it all to tacky dry. Basically just going to follow that blue line on my foam, line it up with the outside marking that I've got on my wheel, that white dotted line that I've put on the outside. And then once I've lined those two lines up and put it all on, I then go back and I'm slowly, slowly just working from that center line outwards pushing any air bubbles out as I go. 
and then I use a bit of heat, not too much, just the hair dryer is perfect. Next bit is to get the craft knife and I'm just going to cut around the spokes and then you can use a bit of heat as well and get that down. And then once I've cut around the spokes and I'm happy with that, I could cut off the excess trim on the inside where it's overlapped. And then basically, it's time to sand. Use a block if you can and you just basically continue that process the whole way around and, and that's the finished result there. So I hope that helps somebody. All right guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.